So, good day everyone. We are Group 5 and we will be presenting the topic, Credit Cards and Consumer Notes. So, at the end of this discussion, you will be able to compare the common types of consumer credit, including credit cards and installment loans, calculate the interest and annual percentage rate of consumer loans, and also you will be able to, to understand the basic insurance terms and articulate how to make an insurance claim. Next. Okay, so first, I will be explaining to you the types of consumer credit, the credit accounts, as well as the types of credit card. Next. So what is a consumer credit? So consumer credit is a non-business debt used by consumers for expenditures other than home mortgages. So in offer it to mga lenders like consumer finance companies or banks to give consumers a line of credit na magagamit nila para makabili ng mga goods and services up to the limit na in ng credit card company nila. So it's like buy now, pay later concept. So para may magamit yung mga con consumers for the meantime for their expenditures and later on, binabayaran naman ng mga consumers or borrowers yung balance nila with interest. Next. So there are two types of consumer credit. Installment and can installment. To installment credit or closed end credit, it is a type of loan where yung borrower borrows a lump sum of money and binabayaran niya yun every certain date, usually monthly in fixed equal payments with low interest rates. So yung mga common installment credits ay yung mga mortgage loans na, din, um, na ginagamit sa pagbili ng bahay, auto loans if need mo ng money to buy a car, and personal loans if you need money for various purposes. So basta pag installment credit, it is any loan na binabayaran over multiple payments. And when it comes to uh, non-installment credit naman, it is also known as revolving credit, extends borrower a line of credit with single payment and no determined end time. Meaning, kapag na-approve ka dito sa non-installment account, mag-set yung financial institution ng credit limit na pwede mo lang hiramin re repeatedly. So, pwede kang humiram ng humiram up to your assigned credit limit. And sa pagbabayad naman ng balance, pwede mong bayaran in full or minimum payments or you can choose another payment amount each month. So sabi dito, it is either secured or unsecured. So pag sinabing secured, nire-require yung borrower na magkaroon ng collateral such as house or vehicles as security against their loan. While unsecured, is uh, di nire-require na may collateral ang borrower. So it depends sa credit lending company if secured or unsecured yung non-installment credit na na-offer nila. And best example nitong non-installment credit ay yung mga credit cards. Next. So speaking of credit card, Credit card accounts allow the borrower to pay the balance in full at any time or carry over a balance owed from month to month. So, isa tong financial product na inaalaw kang mag-borrow ng money issued by bank to buy goods and services with any merchant na nag accept ng credit cards but still up to the assigned credit limit. So, usually, yung, mga, uh, yung credit limit mo, binibase siya sa credit rating mo and sa type ng card na ginagamit mo. So, credit cards accounts have different types that fit different cardholder needs. Next slide.
One type of credit card account is bank credit card. So, isa siyang open-ended amount, meaning yung mga borrowers ay pwede gumiram or gumamit up to a predator need credit limit. Using this type of credit card, pwede kang bumili um, anywhere basta nag accept yung merchant ng credit cards. So, examples of this are Security Bank Credit Card and the Union Bank. Next. Another type is the retail credit card accounts. So, ito naman yung mga ini-issue ng mga retailers uh, that is only limited to customers ng specific retail store. So, if meron ka nito, uncertified customer ka, ma-appreciate mo to kasi pwede kang mag-purchase agad through credit at pwede kang magkaroon ng mga special awards, discounts, and promotions na makukuha lang exclusively ng mga customers na nag-avail nito. So, one example is the Petron BPI MasterCard. It is a credit card packed with great value for private motorists. So, benefits na pwedeng makuha dito ay 3% fuel rebate and 200 peso free fuel voucher. And then, another one is the Robinson's Cashback Card where yung mga card holders nito ay pwedeng makakuha ng um, up to 3% cash rebate from their Purchases sa lahat ng Robinson stores. Next. So another type of credit card is the travel and entertainment cards. So ito yung mga credit cards na ini-issue specifically for travelers. These cards offer rewards and perks na ginawa para sa mga needs ng mga frequent travelers such as airline smiles, hotel points, and other travel-related benefits. So, if kumuha ka ng ganitong card, kasi isa kang traveler, id mo rin bayaran agad within, three, within, within uh, 30 days yung mga nagamit mong money under this credit card. So, one example is American Express. This credit card is for personal and business use and with benefits such as travel rewards, cashbacks, insurance, and more. And then the other one is the HSBC Platinum Visa Rebate Credit Card. So if you have ka nito, you will earn 5% rebate on online shopping and travel transactions, 1% on insurance, and 0.5% on all other spend. So next presenter. So, common but not always beneficial aspect of credit card account. Introductory rate, a temporarily low initial interest rate to entice borrowers to apply for a credit card. Default rate, a high APR that is assist Assess whenever a borrower fails to uphold uphold certain rules of the account, such as making on-time payments or staying within the specified credit limit. <clears throat> Next, variable interest rate cards have rates that change monthly or annually according to general changes in the economy as a whole. Next, annual fees charges live by against cardholders for the privilege privilege of having an open account, but that are not included in the ad, advertised APR. And the last is transaction fee charge live against cardholders per use of the card and are not included in the APR advertised. <clears throat> so, for managing credit card, managing credit, credit cards wisely. Or for first is must understand and monitor your credit card statement. 
this implies the importance of being aware of your credit card transactions by regularly checking your credit card statement. <clears throat> Next is correct errors when appropriate. It's crucial to review your credit card statement for any inaccuracies or unauthorized transactions. Next is recognize how finance charge are computed. It helps you make informed decisions about when and how to use your credit card. <clears throat> and last, the goal is to use the credit card in a, in a manner that avoids all fees, including finance charge. This highlights the importance of using your credit card responsibly to minimize costs by making timely payments, staying within your credit limit, and avoiding unnecessary fees. <clears throat> and next is credit statement. The monthly bill on a credit card account showing the charges and payment made minimum payment required and due, due date among other. And next is billing closing statement date, the last day for which any transactions are reported on the credit statement. And next is grace period. The grace period is the time period between the posting date of transaction and the payment date during which no interest accrues. Or grace period is the Period after the deadline, you can still pay before the lender begins charging interest. So, next. Minimum payment amount. <clears throat> Lowest allowable monthly payment required by the lender. <clears throat> the minimum payment is the lowest amount you can pay from the total of what you owe for goods, services, cash withdrawals, and applicable interest and fees. Next presenter. Next, next one. Ay, makalala So, there are three methods that are commonly used to calculate. I, I, there are three methods that are commonly used to calculate the average daily balance on a credit card bill statement. So the first one is the average daily balance excluding new purchases. The card holder pays interest only on any balance left over from the previous month. Dito is hindi nakasama yung mga new purchases and yung mga deducting payments and credits. So it is the sum of the outstanding balances for every day in the billing cycle divided by the number of days in the billing cycle. So no, second part is the average daily balance including new purchases with the grace period. So dito naman is the balance is the sum of the outstanding balances for every day in the billing cycle. And dito is included naman yung mga new purchases and deducting payments and credits and the same lang na i-divide siya by the number of days in the billing cycle. And the last one is the average daily balance, including new purchases with no grace period. So dito is the balance from the previous month and any new charges made during the billing cycle are included in the balance calculation given the previous month's balance was paid in full. Next. Next slide. So, there are several actions when disputing an item on a billing statement. So the first one is send a written notice. 
notify the merchant, provide photocopies, withhold payment for disputed items, and lastly, review your credit bureau file. Next. So now we're going to talk about, we're going to understand the consumer installment loans. Next. So consumers obtain installment credit in two ways. So the first one is cash loan. So it is a type of loan kung saan pwede na siya ma-deposit sa bank account mo or directly or direct or directly mo na makukuha in the form of cash. So ginagamit tong cash loan if kailangan mo ng quick cash. For example, um for emergency expenses, pagbabayad ng bills or paying of other loans. So next is the purchase loan. It naman yung purchases ng consumer who do not render a payment in full at the time of purchase. Next. So, installment loans can be secured or secured. So, dito sa secured loan, is nagre-require sila ng collateral such as car, home, property, or any valuable asset na pwedeng makuha ng lender if ever man na magkaroon ng default yung borrower sa pagbabayad ng loan. So, while dito naman sa unsecured loan is hindi na kailangan ng collateral. Hindi na siya nire-require. So, ang kailangan mo, ang kailangan mo lang bilang isang borrower is maging credit worthy dun sa mata ng lender. So, comparing this to pala, mas mataas yung interest rate ng unsecured loan since mas mataas yung risk para sa lenders kasi nga, di ba, ina-assess lang dito yung credit worthiness ng borrower. Next. So, purchase loan installment contracts. So, dito sa installment purchase agreement is isa siyang contract kung saan yung seller is papayagan niya yung buyer na bayaran mo na yung property or yung asset not in full payment. If hindi kaya mo bayaran mo buo ng buyer yung property, pwede siya humingi ng consent dun sa seller para gawing installment yung payment. While dito naman sa conditional sales contract, dito um, yung buyer receives possession and rights para magamit yung certain goods but hindi pa rin siya yung may hawak ng title. And yung may hawak pa rin nun is yung seller. So um, makukuha lang ng buyer yung legal ownership kapag nabayaran na niya ng buo yung sale price. So next presenter. For the last topic of this discussion, I would like to discuss. I want to discuss the calculating an installment loan payment. An installment loan is a type of financing that borrows make a lump sum of money and pay it back in regular payments over an agreed period. This type of loan is an essential financial tool commonly used to purchase a car or home or pay among other things. Um, it is important to be very careful about uh, rounding when calculation involves um, exponents. In general, keep as many decimals during the calculations or you can keep at least three, dig signi three significant digits. Next. Uh, calculating an installment loan payment. Um, for the formula here is PO is the loan amount and the beginning balance or the principal. So as you can see, as you can see here in the screen, the refers to is an 
the loan payment, the monthly payment or annual payment. And then R is refer to the annual interest rate in decimal form, 5% or equal to 0 0.005 or 0 0.05. K is, is equal to the number of compounding periods in one year. N is equal to is the length of the loan in years. So here you can see the example of this scenario. For example, if you can afford a $150 per month car payment for five years, what car price should you shop for? So here is the loan interest is 6%. D is uh, representing the, the monthly payment basis. Okay. Yung 150, ito times mo siya sa 0 0.25862787. And then, i-divide mo siya sa 0 0.005. So, yung magiging equal nyan is 7,758.83 dollars. Yung babayaran mong cash para maging monthly installment siya ng 150 pesos per month within 5 years. So, kailangan magbabayad ka ng cash ng 7,758.83. So, paano ba siya mangyayari? So, here indicates um, the formulas. So, 1 minus um, 1 minus 1 plus 0. 0, 6, open um, close parenthesis uh, negative 5 times 12. So mag, magiging ano nyan, magiging result nyan is yung 0 0.25 8678038 tapos um, i-divide mo siya into uh, 150 150 muna pala tapos iti-times siya ng 0 0.25 then i-divide siya ng 0 0.005 kaya nakuha natin yung 7,758.83 dollars na cash kapag yung monthly Payment is 150 per month within five years. So next is next. And dito, if you want to purchase a car for $15,000 and you have been approved for a loan at 4% interest for five years, what will the monthly payment be? Ah, uh, meron tayong 15,000 which is yung ating um yung pag-purchase ng car. Um 15,000 is the amount or or is the loan payment or the monthly payment. And then 4% is yung interest rate niya. Then, 5 is yung years kung ilang taon or magjuju yung yung loan. Tapos, 12 is yung months per year. So, para makuha natin yung 276.25, Yung 1 minus, tapos open parenthesis ng 1 plus 0 0.04, close parenthesis, uh, negative, I minus 5 
times 12. Then nakuha natin siya yung nakuha natin tong 0.1809968693. Then um 15,000 times 0.8099 6893 Para makuha tong 0.00333 ano siya i-divide siya sa 0.04 then yon tapos yung 15000 Then, yung kinalabasan niya, i-divide siya ng 54.29. Then, yun yung magiging monthly payment niya, yung 276.25. Kapag umutang siya ng 15,000 dollars. Next. The add-on interest method, um, interest is calculated by applying an interest rate to the amount borrowed times the number of years to arrive at the total interest to be charged. Where I is interest or finance charge and P is equal to principal amount borrowed and R is equal to rate of interest and T is stands for time of a loan years. For example, assume that Anna borrows on Metrobank uh, 20,000 pesos for two years at 1%. Add on interest to be paid in monthly installment. And may nakita tayong finance charge dyan na 400. So paano makukuha yung 400 pesos? Dito, yung 20,000 na hihiramin ni Anna ito times mo siya ng 0.01 which is yung interest rate niya per monthly and then ito times siya ng 2 for the time is 2 years so makukuha natin yan 400 and sabi dito um yung magiging monthly payment niya is 850 so paano ba natin makukuha yung 850 yung 20,000 na hihiramin niya plus yung finance charge yung kanina inalculate natin 400 tapos close parenthesis i-divide mo siya sa 24 kaya yung magiging monthly installment ni Ana per month is 850 within 2 years of loan yeah, sa interest it 1% interest rate. Next. Discount method of calculating interest. In this method, interest is paid upfront before any part of the payment is applied toward the principal. So, it is calculated based on discount rate multiplied by the amount borrowed and by number of years to repay. Interest is then subtracted from the amount of the loan and the difference is given to the to the borrower. For example, assume that Anna borrows on Metrobank at 20,000 pesos for two years at 1% add on interest to be repaid in monthly installment. In 20,000 pesos, nahihiramin niya sa Metrobank, iti-times mo siya ng, zero, ng 0.01 or 1%. And then, times 2, open parenthesis, is equals to 19,600. Yung discount method of calculating interest niya. So, Yeah, and that's all.